Okay, so this is the first lecture for uh, PHA 421, uh, Dr. DiMassi's part. Um, basically, um, the first uh, part of 421 is going to be about the study design. And we're going to talk about study designs in terms of experimental design and non-experimental designs. Allow for this video, uh, you can follow with me the slides. Uh, you have the slides on Blackboard, I, you can download them, and in fact, you have them in front of you in this video. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the way I, I would plan to do this is first to think about what are the different study design you're aware of, and start to think about, can I group them into categories of design? And the aim of that is to get you to the next slide, which is this one. And basically, in this slide, what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm showing you that there are, in fact, um, two major arms of designs, the experimental design and the non-experimental design. Though they are also something different uh, that we can talk about in the case report with case series. And actually, that's what we're going to start with. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about case report, case series. Then we're going to move into experimental designs in this lecture, and non-experimental designs will be for the following uh, lectures. So case reports and case series, basically case reports, this is when uh, somebody reports, write an article about a single individual or a single case that has something that is unusual. It could be a new diagnosis, it could be a uh, um, a technique that hasn't been seen before, and this is the first time that it has been seen, uh, or it could be uh, any anything that is new. So, for example, uh, asbestos um, in 1924, uh, Dr. Cook, a pathologist, introduced case description of 33-year-old female asbestos worker. So before that, there has there, there hasn't been any kind of indication of what asbestos can cause. So introducing this first case uh, kind of opened the, the medical community about the possibilities that there could be some health risk associated with asbestos. Uh, the other example is from oral contraceptives. 1961, come in, it's a case report. It's a woman, she's 40 years old, and she's premenopausal, developed pulmonary embolism five weeks after starting oral contraceptives. So again, this is something weird. This is something that we kind of wonder if there is an association. So uh, usually the, the, the physician writes it and submit it so people can read about it. Um, I'm a case series is, is, is a series of case reports. Um, and the example you have is in 1974, report of three men with liver cancer working in a venile chloride plant. So it's no longer one patient, one person, rather it's a collection. And then you start, the, the, the case starts to become stronger uh, into pointing a finger towards a possible association. And I, and I do say pointing a finger because case reports and case series cannot actually tell you is a fee association or not. Uh, because you're only looking at those that had the outcome. Um, if you have, if you want to figure out if there is an association, if there is a relationship between exposure and outcome, you need to have exposed and not exposed. Now, at this stage, let me introduce some vocab that I use, and this is exposure outcome, also independent variable and dependent variable. So the exposure is the independent variable. And the outcome is the dependent variable. And as the name indicates, the dependent variable depends on the independent variable. Middle mal outcome depends on the exposure. And just because we call them exposure and outcome, we have it doesn't necessarily mean that they are linked or they are associated. There is a question. Maybe the exposure is uh, associated with the outcome. Maybe the exposure is linked to the outcome. And notice I'm saying linked, I'm not saying causing. And I know causation is also a very strong word that we don't use uh, lightly. Okay, so more example. Um, the typical example, the classical example of case reports and case series comes from AIDS 1980 81, which you have rare pneumonia cases were seen in young homosexual men in Los Angeles. Um, and what was unusual was the fact that this is type of pneumonia was usually seen in older men undergoing cancer treatment. Yani their immune system was suppressed. Uh, also in 81, larger number of capoxy sarcoma in young homosexual men. Again, it was very unusual. 
And Genex CDC initiated a surveillance system that quickly identified that homosexual men.